Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Well, I have the corn sheller disassembled. I'm at the point where I have to find some wood and I'm waiting for a payment to come through. Yes, the other corn sheller sold. So when that payment comes in, I'll take some of that money and I'll go buy the wood to rebuild the new one. It's kind of one hand feeding the other. In the meantime, I've got an old tool here. Well, it's a relatively new tool compared to most of them that I work on, but it's an old one to most people. At the ReStore, I stumbled across a Black & Decker router. And this is a one horsepower. That's a pretty good size one. Ball bearing construction. It's a Black & Decker. It's not a great one. It's a good one, but it's not a great one. Not a plunger router. I'd love to find a plunger router. And I suppose I could find one somewhere, but I haven't run across one lately. At least not in the places that I look. Comes with a wrench, and that's cool. That means that I can take this bit out of there, which whenever you're working on something, you wanna get the sharp pointy things off of it first. Cause that's a good way to get your finger whacked. I have a feeling I'm going to have a little difficulty getting this bit out of there. We'll see if I can loosen this collar up. There we go. Collar slipped off. Now I'll put this back together again so I don't lose the pieces. That bit will fit pretty much any router. It's got a quarter inch shank on it.
little disconcerting there. I got some rust on a screw. And I got some aluminum that's showing pretty good signs of corrosion. And that tells me I could got could have gotten wet somehow. Never a good thing. Well, it spins good enough. Really? Got a lot of corrosion on that part right there. Well, I'm pretty sure nothing's gonna fly off of it. Let's see if it'll spin. Well, we have a winner folks when I first brought it home I plugged it in no go now what's the difference between then and today Well, starts and runs. That makes it a winner. This is acting a little strangely on the adjustment. Could just be weak design. It is Black & Decker after all. And they're not known for having overly robust tools. Put these back together again so I know what goes where. Now that I'm reasonably sure it's working, I set about set about taking it apart so that it doesn't work. I know it doesn't seem to make any sense, does it? Well, not necessarily a situation where you try and make sense. You're trying to make it work. Take that off. I can look in here and see. Oh yeah lots and lots of dirt in there
So there's a captured pin in each one of the handles. Well, I can disassemble the whole thing, but first I'm going to put that rack gear back. Why would you make it like that? I wonder. Strength? I suppose. rolls back and forth a lot easier now. I'll be happy because it's got all that dirt out of there. I'll take this handle apart first. Clever Monkey said, first thing you gotta do is take the top off. Always start at the beginning. Magnets sure are handy when you drop things. Nice for getting little things out of tight places too. Well, what do we have here? We have a petrified stink bug. Yep, they're everywhere. My understanding is they came up from Pennsylvania. Somehow or another they got into a crate 
and got delivered to a place in Pennsylvania and spread from there. Once you get the screws out, you can just slip that off. And that's the anchor bolt that holds the motor inside the frame. That comes out easy enough. That's good. The two of them. They're just what they call invasive species. That's an example of it right there. They invaded my router. Might have come home with it. That's more than likely how they managed to get into that crate. They're just very, very sneaky. And they can go flat when they're when they're alive. Once, once they're dead, they're pretty crunchy. But when they're alive, they'll just flatten right out to about paper thin and crawl through almost anything. I had a bunch of concrete pavers piled up in the blacksmith shop. That's what I put on the floor. Plywood floor, cover it with concrete, fill the joints with sand. No sparks get down in there. You don't burn down your blacksmith shop. That's my thinking anyways. Now, as I unstacked those pavers, when I got ready to do the floor, they were packed full in between. I mean, there's, there's no, no gap between the pavers. They're just concrete on concrete. They were packed in there, almost a complete layer on those 16 inch pavers. Very, very disconcerting. And they're not poisonous, but they are annoying because they land on everything. Yeah, they sound like a B-52 flying through the room too. Take that off. Pull this out. Ah, that one came too. This will let me get in there and clean out the motor. There we go. Oh, metal skin slides off too. Well, that's interesting. I bet that's glued on there in some fashion. When I go to put this back together again, I will want to put this on and put screws in and then pull that E-ring and slide this pin out, slide this over the top of it and then slide the... Nope, that won't work. This spline doesn't extend all the way out to the end. So I will have to have this in position where I want it and glued down. I don't know, that's not glued. That's just there. Covers up the plastic motor shell. Looks nicer. Well, it is Black & Decker after all. This is a catalog number 7613 Type 1, 
25,000 RPM, eight and a half amps, 120 volts AC only, double insulated, caution, wear eye protection for safe operation. See owner's manual for servicing, use only identical replacement parts. It says one horsepower max motor output. That's always a guesstimate. Precision rack and pinion depth adjustment. All ball bearing construction, wrench stores in base. Well, the wrench does store in the base. That's for sure. Okay. I think that's disassembled as far as I want to take it. And since I think I might have some electronic cleaner over here, we'll get some of that and see what I can do. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching. This video is not to be viewed by anyone under the age of 13 in the U.S. or 16 in the European Union without the express written permission of the parents or the legal guardians of the underage person. Such written permission must be on file at the local government entity in charge of enforcing the rules and regulations established by the FTC. Anyone violating these terms is admitting by default that they hold harmless the owners and operators of this channel. Any and all questions should be addressed to your local branch of the FTC.